one culture has lasted longer than any other. Perhaps it has been the willingness of the Han Chinese to unquestioningly accept the leadership of their elders that has led to their being both the largest and the oldest surviving culture on earth. Over the past two millennia, like a sponge, the Han have absorbed almost every other culture they encountered as they grew and spread across this land. In the vast region that is China today, there remain 56 distinct ethnic groups where once there were hundreds. I headed to the southwestern corner of China, to the province of Yunnan, a mountainous region that slopes down from the Himalayan plateau of Tibet. Yunnan is the most ethnically diverse part of the country and is inhabited by 52 of China's ethnic minorities. It's a mountainous region, as are all the regions where the minorities still exist. Lands that are difficult to cultivate and even harder to control. And because in China a basic education costs $250 a year per child, it's unusual for the families of Yi, Pumi, Masu and Nahi people to be able to educate all their children. It'll take them longer to escape the poverty of old China than it will for their fellow Han countrymen. He can come and go from his lover's house, but only at night. He must be back in his mother's house before dawn. His children are reared by his lover's brother or father, and he in turn will rear any offspring of his own sisters. Also, the Masu are free to end a relationship at any time during their lives and to start another if they feel like it. I was invited to the house of the Atsa Min family and found that these Masu people had begun to break some of their own customs. The eldest son, O Er Dojo, has become a government official and has therefore chosen to follow the Han custom by officially marrying his lover. He remains, however, extremely proud of his Masu heritage. Mm. Oer Dojo explains that the Masu hold a search for true love higher than anything else. That's why they keep their relationships open. It gives them the chance to keep looking for the perfect partner. They feel that other cultures are hypocritical when they expect true love the first time round. He points to the inevitable failure of so many marriages in the West. The Masu aren't obsessed with sex, he says. It's just a natural part of things. In keeping the children at home in their maternal grandmother's house, the Masu managed to sustain the family no matter what happens to a particular relationship. And just feeling the warm energy in this house, I can't help but think that they are doing something right. Or maybe it just reminds me of something we've lost at home. I was interested to learn how the Lama felt about the violent destruction of his monastery and the dangers that face the Masu from modern China. Is he worried that Chinese people have lost interest in religion and that even though religion is now tolerated, its death bell has already tolled? But this noble man ignored my questions and asked instead that I bring a message home with me. He told me that there are no real borders on earth, that people should value closeness and friendship and happiness in the home above all else, and that he prays only for a world without war, without corruption, where mankind can live in peace. <laughs> 